right, let's get started for today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly webinar session. My name is Dan Schmidt, uh, a systems engineer here at Verify, and I'll be your host and presenter in today's session. Uh, we are luckily joined uh, today as well with uh, Lane Hu, co-founder of Verify. And so in today's webinar session, we'll be taking a look at the inner makings of our new and re really fun offering, Verify Cloud. Uh, this week's session is uh, really jam-packed with a lot of information. Um, so we did happen to extend the duration of this session out an extra 15 minutes. Uh, so if you can't stay for the extra time, we understand. Um, go ahead and just drop if you can't. Uh, and note that there will be a re recording on this session on our website that can be found um, on our webinars, webinars website in just a few days uh, after we're done. All right, so uh, a packed agenda for today. We got a lot to cover. Uh, so first, we're going to start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. Uh, we'll then uh, cover some uh, uh, some additional slides here in the PowerPoint uh, that uh, we usually don't do, but uh, for for the the case and purpose of all the material, uh, we'll do some slides and then we'll get into a live demo. Uh, next, we'll we'll talk about uh, something new that we are calling Verify Collector. Um, and how that is used in your environment within the Verify Cloud uh, topology. Uh, we'll take just a few minutes to generally talk about our pricing structure for the new Verify Cloud solution. Um, we will then uh, look at the uh, EFT requirements and prerequisites for any of you that are interested in beta testing uh, the Verify Cloud solution. Um, so we'll we'll lay out some information uh, as far as that, and then we will get into a live demo. We'll be showing you uh, the inner makings of Verify Cloud and a true cloud instance with uh, data. So we'll show you what that looks like, and then uh, what everyone's been waiting for, of course, uh, questions and answers uh, uh, provided, as well as us picking a one lucky winner to receive a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. So uh, hang around to see if you've won that. All right. So quick overview of Verify. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, CCX reporting, remote phone control, uh, and change management. But in today's session, we're primarily focusing on our new CUCM call analytics inside the new Verify Cloud platform. If you have any other questions at any uh, time, please do let us know, um, and we can certainly answer those offline uh, after the webinar as well. All right, before we get started, uh, once again, we would like to announce that Verify now offers a new service that provides a managed consulting service to our customer base. Uh, our Verify SEs, or systems engineers, uh, we'll be engaged on a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, uh, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configurations, and system monitoring assistance. Uh, this is a great service that provides a dedicated Verify SE to do all the heavy lifting of report creation for you. Uh, so if you have any interest in this, please do let us know, and we'd be glad to speak more in depth about the new service for you. Okay, so getting into it here for a couple of slides here. Um, I want to start this off by looking at what we all know of Verify today. Okay, so um, today customers run Verify exclusively within their own premises or their own network or a partner's premises or network. Uh, typically for CUCM CDR, uh, the CUCM will SFTP a CSV delimited file uh, or files rather to a on-premise Verify server. Okay, Verify server. Uh, processes both CDR and CMR file types and then inserts them into a dedicated CDR base. So one uh, CDR database per UCM cluster. And what we have here is the option uh, to either keep that local database co-res with the Verify server or, or on the same box as the Verify services or split that off into its own dedicated SQL box. It could be Microsoft SQL or MySQL. Um, and in the case of archiving any such data, right now that's a very manual process. So you would have to literally go into that SQL Server uh, uh, instance and run some scripts to copy all old data and create dedicated databases for them. And that's what we're gonna refer to going forward as manual or off cold or offline data. 
And if you ever need to access that data again, it's a manual effort to bring that database back in and configure verify to, to read that database, okay? Um, and as of course, as you all know, right, uh, today users will be accessing the Verify application through a, a web interface, a web browser. Uh, and typically, uh, about eight, eight or nine times out of 10, it's authenticated with a local account inside of the application. Uh, of course, we do have means for LDAP authentication or Active Directory authentication, as well as SAML or SSO. Um, but for, for the majority sakes, right, people are logging in with local accounts. Uh, so that's what we have today. Now looking into the future with Verify Cloud. Okay, so uh, same concept for the most part, but um, we add in a bunch of different services that we'll, we'll talk about very generally here. So um, in, the, in the Verify Cloud instance, customers will rely on Verify to build, maintain, and house the customer's CDR data in Google Cloud, okay? Uh, this is a very secure uh, method of publish what we're going to refer to as publishing data up to the cloud. Um, but prior to that happening, right, we still have your, your local CUCMs, SFTPing a CSV formatted CDR file as well as CMR file to uh, the Verify server. Okay? For Verify Cloud to work, we are now calling this Verify server a Verify collector. Okay? And this will reside on your, on your premise, on your network. It is the Verify Collector's responsibility to push and publish CDR, CMR, and something new that we have, is what we call CUCM sync data from the local environment up into the Verify Cloud component. Okay. Uh, Verify, <clears throat> excuse me, Verify runs customer specific instances. So each customer will have their own dedicated uh, URL to access and basically their own containers. Everything within that container will be theirs. Uh, it is not a shared environment. Okay. Uh, and for access into this environment, that's the same exact way. Users will access the Verify Cloud interface from a web browser uh, to do all of your, your reporting, your daily searches. But in this case, uh, we're going to start off asking that um, cloud customers will be authenticating via SAML. Okay, so this is going to be any sort of identity provider, uh, Okta, Google, you know, there's other cloud hosted ones that, uh, that, we, that we work with. Um, so the key takeaway here is uh, on the very bottom here, under the Verify Collector, here, under the Verify Collector, we, we try to state that having a local database and what we're gonna call is a hybrid model is optional, okay? So with this Verify Collector, we can, uh, process the data to your existing local databases in addition to splitting that up uh, and um, you know copying that information over into the cloud database as well. So two sets of data is is optional if you have the need for that. Okay, let's talk a little bit more specifically about the verify collector because this is a huge component to, for all of this to work. Okay, so uh, verify collector. Um, will obviously be for your call analytics and dashboard widgets um, for CUCM first. Okay, we are uh, absolutely centric in CUCM first. Uh, down the road, well down the road, uh, we are intending to offer cube based uh, data publishing. Uh, so that is uh, the cube you know, product will also be cloudified at, at a later date. But for this instance, right, it's just CUCM. Okay. So the Verify Collector uh, runs on your existing network. Uh, for, for those of you that have a Verify instance already up and running, this very well can be your Verify Collector. Okay. Um, so the, the main job of the Verify Collector, though, with a change of a license key, is to automatically and securely facilitate publishing. And securely is the keyword here. Uh, we are basically essentially uh, taking a secure tunnel from the Verify Collector up to our, you know, your instance within Verify Cloud to pub publish uh, those three things that we mentioned before, the CDR files, the CMR files, and the CUCM sync data. And that's going to house all your end user information, your description information uh, up to the Verify Cloud. Uh, and this is different from today as, you know, if your Verify server right now is doing a CUCM sync or we're talking to your call manager live, Right? It's on network. The whole point of this is to have something on your network 
to grab that data so we don't have to open up your call manager to internet access you know to push it up to the cloud and so that's the fourth bullet down you could see that the collector acts as a path to the internet instead of requiring a direct CUCM internet connectivity okay so CUCM internet access is not needed uh, for our verified cloud solution okay one thing to note and it's pretty important here for those of you that have on-premise only features things like your remote phone control or as built reporting even CCX reporting and CCX wallboarding, those um, features will run alongside the Verify Collector functionality. So existing on your uh, current Verify server will lay on that Verify Collector functionality on top of it, but that server will still act as your, your, your on-premise um, network connectivity hub. So uh, anything that needs to connect to a CCX server or phones directly in your, in your environment, that will all still be done through your the Verify Collector server. Okay. And the last bullet here, uh, hybrid deployment is supported for each CUCM cluster. Uh, we do allow the determination of uh, hybrid or cloud only or on-prem only. Uh, that is not a global setting. That's gonna be a per cluster setting uh, in our capability. So that gives a little bit more flexibility into saying, hey, I want this very, very large cluster to process only on-premise. But this medium sized cluster, maybe to, uh, to to process and publish data on prem and up into the cloud, that is fully capable uh, within our verified cloud solution. Okay. Um, so, just as a real quick here before I jump to the next slide here, um, this just is a notation that each customer will have their own unique uh, access URL. So, uh, typically, we're going to be you know making it the customer name, but through this process. Uh, through a data, gather, data gathering process, you will get to pick uh, your own access URL name. So it'll be a subdomain of verify.cloud. Okay. All right, a little bit more into the Verify Collector. And we'll, show, we'll, we'll see all this live here uh, in, in a little bit. But the Verify Collector's functionality is now enabled uh, within your license. So if you... Uh, uh, have any interest in publishing data up to the cloud. This is all controlled via your, your annual license. Okay, so there are some additional properties uh, that need to be plugged in for this all to work. Um, and, and that's what we're uh, at Verify, that's what we're primarily looking at. Um, but when these license keys are provided to you and everything is set uh, correctly, you're basically going to see a new option within your setup options uh, called Verify Cloud. Okay, now under Verify Cloud, you're going to see an option to click cluster activation. What this basically does is it takes uh, the information that's coded within your license key and determines and authenticates up into the cloud to say, yes, this customer is who they say they are. Uh, we can uh, activate that cluster and can start communicating to that cluster up into the cloud. So it's a one to one tie from your Verify collector to your instance running up in Verify Cloud. Okay, so. Um, and we'll show you this all here in, in the demonstration in just a few minutes. Okay. Now, for the for the uh, interested uh, people that might want to process data either just locally to their on-prem database or to both uh, on-prem database and cloud, right? There's a there's a couple different uh, factors that go into this. And when we you know sit with you and do some data gathering, we need to find out you know what type of CDR processing are you actually looking for? Is it all your clusters publishing data up to the cloud? And we need to know this for each cluster, okay? And within this license key, um, <clears throat> there's gonna be fields that we say, if this cluster needs to publish in any way to the cloud, right? Uh, we need to turn on some features uh, for you within this license key, and that's what's going to allow the Verify Cloud activation, okay? So the key takeaway here is if you're doing on-premise pro data processing only, Right, we don't need to publish data up to the, the, the cloud cluster. So that's gonna be false. But if you need cloud only or on-prem and cloud, then that would be such a true. So if cloud is needed, uh, your, your cloud cluster collector will be true. Okay? And that's what then sends us uh, through the cluster activation pro process. Now, it is highly technical on the back end of what, what's happening here. I'm gonna keep it very uh, general uh, of what's going on here, but basically what's happening in cluster activation. Uh, our Verify Collector will publish four types of information uh, and record types up to the Verify Cloud instance. And so this is going to include, like we uh, said before, CDR and CMR data, that's obviously a must. 
with the CUCM sync data, the Verify Collector is actually syncing on an ongoing basis and it's, it's querying, you know, user-based information, device descriptions, anything that we would normally see uh, uh, with the word CUCM in it in all of your search criteria options. That is a CUCM attribute. That is not a CDR-based attribute. Uh, so we got to capture that on an ongoing basis from the Verify Collector. And now the Verify Collector is also pu publishing all of this information up into your cloud instance. Um, and then what we say is the CUCM cluster activation info. So part of this cluster activation is looking at the, the, the secret key information uh, that's coded in, into your key. And so what we're going to call that is CUCM cluster activation info. That's the cluster ID that you've always had before and you've always had to supply us before. That's what ties, verifies uh, validity and you know, processing data for a specific cluster. Um, so that will still need, be needed very much so. We'll, we'll use that. And amongst other properties, we're going to take all of those and say validate. Yes, this cluster on this verify collector is allowed to publish data up to this instance within uh, Google Cloud or Verify Cloud. All right, um, some of the you know other components here uh, that we use, and again, we're not going to get into too much detail here, but uh, Verify now will be using a distributed event streaming platform built into the cloud uh, that its sole, you know, you know, its purpose, its capability is to publish and consume data records efficiently, right? When we, when we enable uh, numerous customers, we're going to get a flood of data, we're going to get a lot of data. Uh, this service, this di distributed event streaming service up in our cloud is basically responsible for handling a, that flood of data very efficiently. Okay, so we're able to uh, parse and process and publish all that information, uh, sorry, publish and consume that information uh, uh, pretty quickly. Okay? Uh, this streaming platform is also responsible for permanently storing the database into uh, our database that we're using in the cloud. And uh, its primary case here is used for scaling resources as needed, right? Customer ABC might be processing just a little bit of data and customer XYZ might be trying to publish a, a, a large sum of data and maybe they might be utilizing uh, the dashboards and reports quite heavily. Well, this you know, distributed event streaming platform will be scaling those instances as needed, okay? so. Uh, the more that's going on, uh, more horsepower that's needed on the back end. So that's what that does. Okay. Um, and then just to, to repeat here again, the Verify Collector license, right? An updated license, if you are publishing data up to Verify Cloud, uh, an updated license is required, which will hold certain properties that validates your, your Verify Collector instance up to your cloud instance. Again, don't want to get too deep into the weeds here, but this is a very general view of how this communication is working. Okay, So as a user sits on the bottom here, uh, they are going to be browsing to their own custom URL. Okay, So in this case, we're using customer-abc.verify.cloud. They're establishing a secure connection HTTPS up to our Verify app held within the Verify cloud. But at the same time, while that takes place, um, we talked about the uh, cluster activation and some of the other components taking place. That is actually communicating up to a new service in our, our system, which we call CDR processing agent. Okay? Uh, prior to this, in your on-prem instances of Verify, you had one service. You had the Verify service that handled everything. That would be your CDR processing. That would also be handling your, uh, your, your access into the application. So that would be re, you know, receiving your HTTP or HTTPS requests to access the application. We're splitting this up now to uh, multiple different services. So the CDR processing agent service is now solely responsible for taking that data feed. So we got the CDR files, we got the CMR files, and we have the sync data. And we're, we're processing this, we're publishing this into a Percona database. Okay, so we, have, we are holding CDR, CMR, and CUCM sync data, data in, into a component database. Uh, within the same environment, right, uh, we are also now storing your, all your configurations, right, your report configurations, your schedules, uh, all your dashboard information, uh, basically anything that is tied to your instance of the application. So when you log in each and every time, the same information comes back. That is going to be stored in a database uh, as well now too. Um, not to get too technical, but that, that differs a little bit from the on-premise solution where now 
everything's stored into what we call H2. And that, you know, if you would ever work with verified support, right, we, we access that uh, in the case of ever um, having to uh, fix any of your configurations, there may be times where we, where we would ask for that. So we have two Percona instances basically talking back and forth to one another, one housing your all your call data and the other housing all your config data and app data. Okay, And you can very well see that the verify app that you are accessing is reading both. Okay, So um, for any such email delivery going forward, right? Uh, we will be using uh, Gmail, Google Mail uh, for SMTP relay, relay uh, to uh, your mailbox. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that. So just a quick overview of how this looks, you know, so you could, if some of you may be visual learners. Uh, hopefully this helps to understand the data flow. Okay. All right, <clears throat> let's start talking a little bit about uh, pricing and packaging and, and what we're we're intending to do going forward with all of this. Okay. So the huge difference and the one thing to note or the one thing that you should take away from this is unlike our on-premises licensing that you're currently used to, we currently price by phone or user account. Uh, and you would have those respective SKUs that you see in quotes and invoices and things like that. Uh, the difference here is that the verified cloud pricing will be entirely based off of the amount of data we need to store and manage. Okay, so, um, Really, it doesn't have any dependency on the number of phones or user accounts or sorry, user counts within your organization anymore. Uh, it's going to be strictly based off of the estimated total number of calls stored. If we happen to know what your calls, you know, your, your call volume looks like within your databases, obviously we're going to use that because that's a little bit more factual than us uh, estimating what your call volume should be. Okay. Um, and uh, just as a note here, the Verify Cloud pricing is for an annual subscription, so a 12-month term subscription, uh, and that houses however many call records you need to store within uh, a set of tiers that we have. We're, we're going to call these plans, okay? So obviously we have more plans and, uh, uh, than what's indicated here, but just to show you how we're kind of starting off here, um, we have a 1 million record stored plan, a 2.5 million records store plan and then we start you know growing and um, having tiers for the more uh, robust systems okay and then obviously uh, we also have custom sizing plans as a possibility as well okay all of this uh i just want to state all of this is subject to change um, but just to give you an idea of how our our licensing and pricing is going to work okay. a little bit more specific on how uh, how we go out to determine the number of calls stored, okay? So typically today, uh, a user uh, must retain a certain amount of data, and that's going to be based off of time. Let's say we'll use 12 months as an example, okay? So a customer wants to retain 12 months of recent data that is always accessible, always on, um, and is what's going to be most prevalent whenever you're doing your daily searches and dashboards. That's what we're accessing. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to refer to as hot data. Okay, so this is indicating we have two databases. Amongst those two databases, uh, we need 12 months of hot data. Okay, there may be some circumstances though where a customer needs to retain one or more uh, older historical years of data. So it's data that's not necessarily accessed all the time, uh, but in maybe a legal jam or uh, HR inquiry. You need to bring data back online to provide a report, maybe for a summons or, or what have you. Okay, that's what we're going to refer to as on-demand data. Okay, so this is new, a new concept uh, to verify. Um, so we have hot data and on-demand data. The the opposite of that, or the the anti of that, is going to be cold and offline data. This is just a symbolism that you can you will be able to eventually shuffle or move offline data into your on-demand data, okay? So for the inquiry that says, yes, I have 12 months of active CDR, but I actually need to take, you know, the past 18 months uh, temporarily so I could run a quick report. We're gonna move offline database of, you know, six months and actually shuffle that into our on-demand data, okay? For us to, you know, price out and quote 
our, our storage, our, our call record storage, right? We have to take into consideration the hot data and any on-demand data that you're going to be needing. So in this case, uh, we have 12 months of CDR plus 16 months of CDR. We calculate all that up and say, well, here's an expected, you know, 5 million calls that need to be stored uh, in your instance up in Verify Cloud. Okay, so um, that is how, you know, very high level, that is basically how pricing is going to work. You know, hot data plus on-demand data equals your total call stored. All right, so just a couple uh, caveats uh, you know, or notes. Uh, so initially, right, Verify Cloud will only be supporting CUCM CDR call analytics. And this will include your call analytics reporting tool, your call history uh, tool, which you know many of you use currently, as well as your dashboards pointing to CUCM uh, CDR and your announcement widgets. Note, this will not be working for CCX wallboarding or reporting. Uh, so if you have, um, dashboards that use UCCX wallboarding, right? That must still be done from your Verify Collector machine, not through the Verify Cloud machine, because that will not have uh, connectivity or network communication to your UCCX, okay? So that just is a general state here. Even though it is cloud, there is a non-zero footprint on the customer's premises. And this is the requirement of the Verify Collector server that we talked about, okay? Um, and just as another uh, reiteration, another point, because it's very important, because Verify Cloud pricing is based almost entirely of the amount of data stored uh, within our cloud instances, uh, there may be significant changes to their call activity, uh, meaning, uh, you know, throughout a customer's term, their annual term, they may see that five months in, they actually have way more data than they anticipated. So that, you know, we fluctuate with that, okay? So just as a note for that. All right, just to spend a couple more minutes here before the live demo on, uh, if any of you are interested in a uh, beta or early field trial, uh, you know, uh, prerequisites, this, we, we plan on starting this here in a week or two. Um, I'll say two to be more uh, likely just, so I don't uh, lock anything in prematurely, but uh, some prerequisites for any customers, current customers that are interested, okay? So uh, we are saying that for only the EFT, candidate customers will agree to a max capacity of two months uh, worth of CDR or, or 2.5 million or under uh, call records stored. Um, this is going to be open to current customers only. Uh, so if there are any uh, uh, new prospects on this call, I apologize. Uh, we're, you know, at this point, right, it's only gonna be customers that have signed up with Verify and we could start using their data. Um, with this, uh, obviously there's gonna be a lot more data gathering that needs to take place for us to set up your instance of Verify in the cloud. So things like, hey, what do you want your desired subdomain URL? How do you wanna access it? What um, SSO? Uh, versions uh, do you have readily available that we could connect to for your IDP um, and different things like that. You know, how much data are you expecting? Um, you know, there's a couple different questions we'll ask. Okay. Uh, if uh, there is any interest in the EFT, we do ask that uh, that that customer would agree to participating in the full EFT. And, I, and we say this because we're doing something a little bit different this time around is we're having milestones within our EFT releases. So right now we've identified three milestone releases, all part of uh, cloud. And the next screens that we'll see, uh, we'll go into detail about, you know, what is included within each milestone. So we just ask that any EFT, you know, any EFT customer will actually install each update uh, as they continue through the EFT process. Okay. Overall timing of this few months uh, for EFT process ending early to mid April. Okay. So. Um, so if any interest before I get into the details of EFT, if there is any interest whatsoever, please contact your, your closest Verify uh, Ninja, or you could just reach out to cloud at verify.com and we'll, you know, we'll get the ball rolling with that and communicate with you on the next steps. So next is our EFT milestone one. What is milestone one consisting of? What are we really looking at to get out of EFT more, you know, obviously your, your input is very, very much um, needed and wanted uh, to say the least. But milestone one, just to lay out the, the expectations here, um, 
a customer must use SAML. Okay, so uh, we have tested and successfully passed Okta and Google IDP. Um, there are other cloud-based IDPs that would likely uh, function just as long as a SAML two. Uh, that you know we could work with you in setting that up. Okay. <clears throat> Um, if a SAML, uh, and we, I think we're going to say in later stages of milestones, maybe two or three, if you do uh, not have an IDP, an identity provider for SAML, uh, we can potentially speak about white or IP whitelisting. Uh, so, you know, only a certain group of IPs can access that subdomain. Okay. Uh, we will be recommending that any customers in EFT do use the hybrid processing model. So again, that's both on-premise database processing as well as publishing up to the cloud. Uh, and this milestone really focusing focuses on the Verify Collector and the cloud cluster activation. So this is what we're gonna be showing uh, in, in just two minutes here uh, in our demo. So setting it up, making sure we could communicate up to the cloud instance and publishing data, okay? In this case, our focus is not necessarily, hey, do we have access in the UI to report on this data? The data is going to be there, um, but at this point, it's we're really only focusing on making sure everything it runs smoothly and is successfully publishing up to the cloud in bulk. Okay, uh, and just as a note, this this range here, I think all these dates are probably offset by a week, I would say, um, but you know we're going to be doing about two or three week increments for each milestone. All right, milestone two, the primary. Uh, focus here, uh, everything's the same, but the primary focus here is the CUCM sync information. Okay, in e milestone one, CUCM sync is not uh, readily available. It's just going to be the CDR and CMR data publishing. In milestone two, we'll be focusing on the sync data. So we'll have all three file types CDR, CMR, and CUCM sync data being published up into the database uh, held in, in cloud. Okay. Um, we can potentially look at importing and exporting CUCM data like we have today in Milestone 2. So if that's a possibility, right, we could always import that into the uh, cloud instance of Verify as well. Um, and here is where we'll start introducing uh, the focus really heavily looking at the front end, the UI, as you sign into your new custom URL that's pointing into the cloud. Um, you're going to be running your day-to-day -day searches and reports and dashboards everything comes back efficiently in milestone two okay and then here you can say again a week off uh, but we're going to be saying probably early uh, to mid-march to the end of the month okay and last but not least is milestone three um, here is where we are going to really be focusing on uh, two things here um, single sign-on auto user provisioning we recognized that um, the way we input users today uh, can be cumbersome. If you have a lot of users to build into it, uh, that may or may not be compounded now with cloud. So uh, we are going to be building out a uh, user provisioning system that says, hey, input this user automatically and assign them these specific rights into, into the verified solution. Uh, I'll have to check. I'm not sure if this is still in milestone three or if we bump that out. Um, uh, well, I'll confirm that later here. Um, but that may or may not be in milestone three. Cloud alerting, CDR alerting is going to be in milestone three. That's a definite. So um, if we process calls of 911, having the cloud instance notify you, um, just like we have today with the on-premise system. Okay. Um, and then our main focus here, right? And this kind of goes through all of them, but our goal here is to make the, the experience from what you're used to seeing today in on-prem, we want that experience to be uh, feature rich as well into the Verify Cloud instance. It's, it's basically, we want it to be an exact replica of everything that you have today in on-prem in Verify Cloud. And you'll see here in just a minute that the interface, everything that you're used to seeing is exactly the same in Verify Cloud. Okay. Um, so at this rate, let me go ahead and switch to my demo. Okay. So, Remember, in our demo solution here, or in our in any cloud setup uh, that we're talking about, we we start everything off with a verify collector, and I got my local verify instance running right here uh, as a verify collector. And then to note here, you'll see a couple of new options: <clears throat> verify cloud activation. Again, this is all dependent on 
the properties that we code into your license key. So essentially what I've done is I've preloaded a, a, a license that has all the specifics uh, to a, a built cloud instance for my customer called Kickoff, okay? And so customer kickoff is trying to set up cloud publishing, uh, data publishing up to their instance of Verify. So uh, like before we said, your current inst installation of Verify, it really is just an uploading of a new key that will give you this option. And so when we go into Verify Cloud and Cloud Activation, oops, let me sign in here, pick me up. So I'm using Okta for SAML. <clears throat> When we go into cloud activation here, two things to note. The cloud activation that we see here is independent of our normal you know, local database processing. That is still going to be handled under cluster CUCM. So if I go into my cluster CUCM, we see that it's disabled, right? So I am not processing data to my local database at this point. Um, but however, I am wishing to just process and publish this data up into my cloud instance, which in my case, I have opted to kick off dot verify dev dot cloud. Okay, so that's my URL that I'm going to be accessing to hit the interface for where all my data is actually stored at. Okay, when we go out and we activate this, so you're going to simply say, well, I'll take my kickoff cluster, the license, license is going to validate that kickoff cluster can publish and write data up into the verify instance noted within the public, uh, the key. Uh, once we enable this, right, that's basically its cue to start looking for data. So when we go to my, uh, you know, verify collector machine, right, currently you have your data, your CDR data being dumped to whatever cluster you got identified in the CDR folder. Okay, so notice we've got a new folder called cloud. So basically what we're doing is we're separating that data. And if you had on-premise uh, data processing into your local database on, that would happen. And it would actually copy the CDR data files into a new directory and everything within that gets published up. Okay. So that is the verify collector side. Okay. Once you start getting data into that directory, all the magic happens, right? It's, it's copying all that data and it's publishing up to verify cloud in, in which it takes a few minutes to consume that data. And so I've got my instance of uh, Verify Cloud. So it's kickoff.verifydev.cloud. A customer's domain would be verify.cloud. Um, but really quick here, let me go back. Uh, like we said before, you could run your call history searches, you could run your reports and your dashboards all here within the instance of cloud. So this is just a HTTPS connection into a cloud uh, container. Uh, dedicated to any specific customer. Okay, so really quick here, got seventy thousand records. Um, you know everything that you would normally, you know, want to see: your date, time, information, your your devices used, the numbers dialed, duration, ring time, all that good stuff. Now, if I wanted to test this really quick, I could certainly bring up my uh, FTP connection one more time here. Actually, wow. Right, I'm gonna move this over to my other screen here, and I'm gonna just dump in a bunch of data here. Okay. Okay, so we're at 70,000 now. We're, we'll give it just a minute here to process in. Okay, these are pretty large files. So we've got about 15 megs worth of data coming over. Okay, and uh, I believe I have my server set to every two minutes here. While this runs and processes, note, right, we still have the same capability for data summary. So the available CDR data in the cloud instance. Okay, so ideally, right, this should be this, you know, the same as your on prem. Uh, data database, but this is only on prem data publishing. So let me go ahead and refresh this and see if we've got any results. Okay, so I'm just doing a catch all. Original call party number does not equal a bunch of ones. So let me see if we've adjusted that real quick. Actually, we have not. Oops. 
Jesus. Okay, uh, so looks like uh, my FTP server is down. I know we're running short on time here. Uh, we've got three minutes. I know I've seen a lot of questions come in here. Um, but yeah, just to, to wrap this up here, uh, data is gonna be published every same increment, two minutes if you have it, uh, up to the verify instance of the server. And it's the exact same um, interface that you would normally see in your on-prem system. We have introduced concepts of application versus system administrator. So there are certain things uh, right, you, you, you will not see in the, the Verify Cloud instance um, as a system administrator. Um, so just as a note, right, you can see that the options here are far less uh, here than if you were to be on your on-prem um, your on-prem system. So I know I covered a lot of information in a relatively short amount of time. I do want to be conscious of everyone's time here. Uh, so we'll wrap that up for today here. Um, any, let's see here, any questions that we can go over? Lane, I don't know, were you able to see any questions? Let me see, see my uh, questions. So. I think we've got most of them. I've been capturing them along the way, and um, I know we're getting short on time here. So for anyone that we um, may have missed, we'll certainly uh, reach back out to those directly. Those are some really great questions. Thank you to everybody. Excellent. Thanks, Link. Um, all right, let me present here. So uh, the time that we have all been waiting for, the announcement of our $50 Amazon gift card winner. And that this week is gonna go to Dan Schluter. Thanks, Dan, for joining us today. Um, and thank you to the rest of you all for joining us today. Um, glad you could make it. Uh, this session has been recorded. We will be posting this session up to our website. Uh, and just note, right, these, we got um, ongoing sessions every week. Uh, we're back on track with weekly sessions. Uh, so next week's session is going to be all about the Verify Report repository uh, that's been added in our latest release. Uh, that will be, again, 11 Pacific, uh, as always. Uh, and your host and presenter will be Matt Sykes and Mike Stratton. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for joining today. Please go out, be safe, and, uh, be, you know, be nice to one another. Thanks. We'll talk to everyone soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.